Hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode from Rock to the Cloud. Uh, as always, I'm Tom Hall, and um, we're going to talk to you today about... Well, and actually, I've got to correct something, because on the last episode, Oren was asking me, he's like, what is Rock? And it's Reseller Option Kit, right? Okay, just for those people that don't sell servers to people through the channels. Um, it, it's a reseller option kit, and it's the best way to buy Windows licensing for server, in my humble opinion. Um, so anyway, yeah, if you need to buy a pre-configured, Rock is the way to go. So we talk from the Rock to the Cloud, all things that you need to know about Windows Server um, and all the exciting new technologies happen. Now, we've just launched Server 2022, as you know, and some exciting new features are in there. And to talk about these things, we need an expert. So the expert we've got today is, well, pretty special. Um, it's none other than uh, Mr. Ned Park. So Ned, I don't feel like I need to do an introduction, but we will ask you to just do a quick intro to everybody, just um, to remind them of who you are and, and why it's so amazing to talk to you today. You absolutely need to do an introduction. I am not that well known. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Ned Pyle. Uh, I'm a program manager at Microsoft. Uh, I work in Windows Server. I make a lot of stuff, and I've been here for a long time, but I mostly am known for making file services, things like an SMB protocol and uh, DFS, and uh, I worked on Active Directory for a long time, um, storage replica, storage migration service, um, and a lot of uh, things I can't talk about yet that are coming. Uh, that is, see, that is exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things you actually mentioned that, well, in fact, actually, you mentioned two of the things there that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about SMS and SMB. And we're going to talk about why they're exciting and how they've evolved a little bit, maybe with Windows Server 2022, although they're older than that, actually, their features, but they've just been. I suppose tweaked a little bit and kind of brought into the wrapper, and that you know they're, they're they're adding some new exciting things. So let's talk about that. Let's talk. Let's jump into today's subjects and talk about that. So what is um, you know what new file service scenarios and features are in Windows Server 2022 um, and Windows 11? Where, is that is that a good starting point? Yeah, I mean we have a lot. Um, we did a lot of. We were very busy over the last couple of years. Um, we made a some big fundamental sort of radical new feature work, some state of the art, some modernization features in SMB. And then we also uh, got back to business on security on some new things. So this is, um, if you think about SMB, there was uh, starting in 2012 and Windows 8, which, you know, Windows 8, there was SMB 3. And that's where we really kind of like radically started adding a lot of heavy duty um, commercial and enterprise and large scale features you know, like multi-channel and encryption and uh, RDMA support and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, big fundamental shift. Um, this, to the, the, the 22 release and the Windows 11 release is a sort of a similar shift where we're starting to make some really radical state-of-the-art um, scenarios. One is SMB compression. And the SMB compression is where you can now uh, compress files on the fly, just over the network. And so I, I can compress, I can set a share to compress, I can set a server to compress, I can set a client to always compress, a, a map drive, I can use the RoboCopy tool or uh, XCopy if you are, I have a gray beard like me, and uh, really radically change um, when I'm copying larger files, how long it takes and how much bandwidth I consume. And you can set uh, clients and servers just to just to do it so your end user doesn't have to care, right? Like yeah. if you're mapping drives for them or if you're um, configuring their clients for them, it'll just suddenly be like, wow, my file copies are a lot faster. I don't know what happened. I guess Windows 11 is really great. And really it's not Windows 11's help, it's compression's help. So that's built into 22, Server 22, and it's built into Windows 11. And you can use it right now. It just works right now. There's an article on it at uh, aka ms forward slash smb compression i'm always very imaginative with my names and uh, what we actually do under the covers is we are um using express compression uh x-p-r-e-s compression which is a fairly light on the cpu it's not the most compressing like greatest compressor of all time it's sort of a balance we took we actually support five of these things but we used one that we wanted to give a good mix of performance yeah. And uh, I use it all the time. Like I, I deal with, you know, 
dump files and memory files and uh, BHD files and stuff, which all are just horrendously inefficient file formats there, <laughs> mostly air. And yeah. uh, so when I copy them around, I'm doing it from home, right? I mean, I'm still working in a lockdown scenario here in Seattle. So my uh, fantastic, you know, Seattle is the cutting edge of technology in the United States, West Coast Technology Center, you know, rivaled only by San Francisco. And so my cable modem gives me a whopping 18 megabits per second upload speed. Okay. Yeah, it's fantastic. And so when I use it, I'm shaving off like hours of time yeah. copying files. It might take three hours. I, go, I might go down to say 20, 25 minutes. Like it's making a gigantic difference in my life to yeah. use that feature as a, somebody who needs to copy big files all the time. Yeah. So that's one thing. That's one thing that like everybody gets. It's it's completely in every version of Windows 11, every edition of Server 22. It's totally ubiquitous. I wanted to have at least one good, big, modern feature that was for everybody because I'm a believer in uh, technology democracy. And then uh, we have another really big radical change, which is SMB over Quick. And that yeah. is us giving you the option to not use TCP anymore and instead use the QUIC protocol. QUIC is a UDP-based, always encrypted with TLS 1.3 and AES um, protocol that uh, it, so it's, it was originally invented by some folks at Google and then it became an actual standardized protocol um, for about the last year, it's IETF. Yeah. So, you know, registered protocol. It's no longer Google's. And we make a version of it called MS Quick. They make a version. It's the basis of HTTP 3, if you uh, want to something very common. Um, they wanted a way to have, you know, to get around TCP's sort of performance issues with UDP, but they wanted to get around UDP's reliability issues with TCP, and they sort of mashed together the parts they liked best from both, and then had the good idea of saying, you can't have an unencrypted version. So instead of T TCP has sort of reached its limit now after 50 years of what anybody's willing to do to improve it. Yeah. And Quick is from a web world and a untrusted internet world, it is probably the real successor to it. Okay. And so we were like, hey cool, quick. Um we got into this view of it early on that it might be sort of uh, sort of a fundamental change we could hop aboard. And so we made SMB over Quick, where we use the Quick protocol just like HTTP would, or or DNS, or any other features would, and just encapsulate SMB inside of it. So your SMB works normally. Yeah. Still, no no experience for SMB changes for the user. They can't really tell. Yeah. And under the covers, it's all we're on the wire using UDP four four three and doing so, encryption. So, so it's adding the encryption and the speed sort of together. Um, yeah, it all matches it together. I don't like to talk about it being a great speed thing right now <laughs> smb on tcp is way faster <laughs> than smb okay. on quick but uh, quick itself is trying to work out their own sort of performance issues and it's still a pretty new protocol yeah and so it's uh like smb with encryption on tcp or rdma you know uh versus smb over quick will stomp it but they will not work if so, if you got a mobile user, a hybrid user, a pandemic working from their house user, yeah. or somebody at a coffee shop user, they actually get to their files, unlike the other person. I mean, it's a built-in VPN right, without see. the VPN sort of tiresomeness. And so it gives you that compatibility. So that, that yeah. is, that's kind of, so it's the best of encryption, security, speed, and compatibility. So that was why that decision was yeah. made. Okay. It's going to be a really interesting scenario. Yeah, it's and that's the one where it's less democratic. So that is in Windows 11 as a client, and it's in Windows Server 22 Azure Edition as a server. And so you can run an Azure Edition server at the edge of your Azure Compute Cloud. You can run it eventually here, once we get out of preview, on yeah. uh, Azure Stack. Um, the Azure Files team is going to have SMB over Quick as well, so we'll just be a sort of a gamut. And we have um, a really cool announcement coming at Ignite, um, where we're talking about um, partners providing it as well for not Windows. Oh. So, yeah. So, like, when you think about mobile, you don't think about 
when you think about mobile phone, you no longer think about Windows anymore. No. Right? You, you think about Android. No, we and, uh, we, and iPhone. IPhone. <laughs> we had our shot. We took our shot. We blew it. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went. Let's not talk about. It. Um, so, um, would you would you have any advice for um, on on securing SMB beyond? Um, you, you know the new security options that we've just discussed, or you know, is there any any other things that people should think about? Yeah, I mean that's another thing we did. So uh, in Windows 11 and in 22, we added a bunch of security features. So there is AS256 for the truly paranoid. Um, there is signing acceleration where we 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 switch to a much faster performing signing cryptographic suite, so that your uh, performance with AES signing is greatly accelerated. Um, we, if you're a, a administrator of servers, like a, and deep into say, like for example, clustering and stuff, we made it so that for, again, the, uh, the, the true tinfoil hat, <laughs> east west encryption knobs and signing knobs inside of the cluster where you could say like these nodes talking to these nodes in the cluster can use encryption they could use it for csv they can use it for a storage bus like like it, all the various instances that use smb under the covers as a fabric got their own knobs and then we added encryption and signing for rdma which again is a typically an east west conversation yeah um to make it so that you could actually encrypt you know, in, inside the cluster at specific layers of the cluster. Um, I, and those are all available to, that's all 22, that's Windows 11. I don't care about uh, which edition you run. Quick is the only one that has a particular sort of business plan of around, we have a whole new flavor of Azure-y things. Let me sort of limit you to Azure-ness with those things. This is broad, anybody can use it. And then I've written a couple of articles in the last year or so really around securing SMB, um, both as a, in a inbound outbound sort of way of client, uh, interception attacks, how to prevent those, you know, mm -hmm. ways to make sure that your users aren't having their SMB abused for phishing purposes, for example, to yep. get access to credentials and things. And then East West as a lateral movement thing so that SMB is not being used as a way to just run around your network once some machine gets compromised. And I, I posted this up on the IT ops talk blog. Okay. And um, we'll get you some links here. Maybe we can show oh, the screen. Absolutely. Get me the links and then we'll make sure that we pass them on to our um, tens and hundreds of viewers. <laughs> and we make sure that you get those. So, um, you know, you mentioned and we talked about um, obviously SMB compression. How do you think that's actually going to improve you know, IT pro user experience. What 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 would you what would you say that that's going to look like? I mean, uh, the really important thing. What the reason why I did the feature originally mm. was to improve Hyper V live migrations. Okay. So that you could, when you were doing a live migration, you know, which is you're copying a VHD really, you know, through the through the network. Again, a VHD file. Uh, if you've done a fixed disk especially, but even if you've just done a regularly provisioned one and time has come and gone, it fills up with zeros that are utterly pointless, but which your network has to consume. Yeah. And uh, this compression feature, I mean, it. I have a little blog post coming out maybe in a few weeks that I keep pushing off and stuff, but <laughs> I routinely get 70, 80, 90% time savings and wow. like, I mean, uh, when it gets into the into a life long area of of highly compressible data, I go from maxing the network to not using the network really at all. I mean, like my savings and bandwidth becomes almost total yeah. when I get into those good spots. But I mean, if I'm, I, I usually get like a significant like 50, 60, 70 percent bandwidth drop over the course of a copy or a sure. transfer. It really will. It's life changing. You know, when you think about working with large files as an administrator, which you well, often do. And, and with your broadband as well, so. Yeah, with my so-called broadband. I mean, we don't have truth in advertising laws here like you do in the UK. We'd yeah. never be able to call this broadband. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. I, I just changed. I just managed to get um, like a gig up and a gig down. So that was like, and sorry, I know I'm, I feel like I'm Thomas Moyer right here because he, he's, he's like, I'm in Switzerland and I've got 10 gigs and I'm like. Oh great, yeah. I I've, I've just got one gig, and like, thanks. You just made me feel. I I feel special. That you, so yeah. I, yeah, sorry for you, man. 
Um, that's like like Seattle. Somebody needs to come out to Seattle and sort that out. Yeah, I'm a mile away from you know the Amazon campus, and I can't get fiber at my house. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, that that, that absolutely. <laughs> um, in terms of um, so I went to digressing completely. In terms of SMB Everquick, um, and you know it's finally in, it's finally available. Um, you know, people are talking through uh, new protocols, how it works, how it changes the game. Um, surely there's a demo of that. <sighs> there is a demo of that. Can I try and present it right now? We'll sort of see what happens. Let's we'll see this. what happens. <laughs> Never can tell. Do, do, do. I have a demo that no one has ever seen before. Fresh demo alert. Fresh demo. So we'll see. <laughs> and oh, this, this is uh, yeah. It, like, don't work with animals, kids, and do live demos. <laughs> All right, can you see oh, my? It's, it's coming screen. through. All right, here we go. All right, let's see if this works. All right, so I'm sitting here on a uh, my Windows 11 quasi laptop and I've mapped a drive to the server. I'm inside the office. Um, my persona here is a, 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 an editor at a publishing house. And this is where I go to look at, you know, books that I'm working on editing and stuff like that. I'm going to open up this uh, book. And this is, I mean, this is a normal experience for anybody, a map drive yeah. using SMB. And here's my book. It's a book about uh, my dogs, coffee table book. It's very nice. <laughs> so uh, now in the world of um, me being able to leave the office and go across the street with my coffee table book to go to a coffee shop, uh, I'm going to find that trying to open up this same file is not going to work anymore, right? Unless I have a VPN uh, working today, that day, my experience will be actually uh, waiting a long time for this to give me an error, which I'm going to not wait the minute for it to give me an error or opening up a word document waiting a minute for it to give me an error yeah um, which here i'm going to just do a little cooking show action and make it uh poof have an error much faster than it actually would here's one i prepared earlier <laughs> yes so that's life today so here i am in windows admin center i'm an, I'm an administrator now uh, of a file server that i've got on the network edge running uh, Server 22 Azure Edition. And if you haven't seen Windows Admin Center, I added all this file sharing stuff over the last year. So it's really got a huge new experience for doing file services, if you weren't aware. But in the you know global server settings, I have a new option to enable SMB over quick, which I'm going to do. And all I have to do is pick a certificate that I've already issued to the machine with some requirements and stuff. And at that point, it has a list of names in the cert that are allowed to be used by the server. And you'll notice here, this is all hot off the presses. I can actually configure KDC proxy and uh, do all that stuff for you. So you don't have to go through and configure it. You have to configure the client, but you don't need to do anything on the server. And I'm now configuring SMB over quick. So I picked a cert and I basically picked a name and I clicked OK. And that's it. I have set up SMB over quick now. That's all I had to do. Obviously, I have to do getting a cert and putting the machine at the edge of the network. Those are all sort of external tasks, but the actual configuration part is, is, is as easy as I can make it. And here I'm as this user again. Yeah. I have not rebooted. I have not done anything to this client. And that drive is back to working again. Even though I have blocked the port, you know, or I couldn't get to it over SMB TCP 445 anymore, I automatically will try quick now if TCP is not working. So the user doesn't get extra prompts. There's no like, oh, I don't know what happened. Let me try, you know, there's no experience like that that I, I hate those experiences. You can't teach users that stuff and there's no point to it. And now yeah. I can get in here and open up my terrific coffee table book again. And <laughs> as far as I could tell, nothing really changed as a user experience, except now it works in a way that it never did before. Yeah, it's just more efficient. Yeah, so that is like, I mean, that's the user experience demo. There's not a whole lot to it, right? It's a <laughs> life before and life after. It doesn't work and does work. <laughs> well, we get to see your dogs, and they're, and they're pretty cute. So um, oh, yeah. that's like win-win for everybody. They see the demo, and they see the dogs. So um, <laughs> you broke two of those fallacies. Um, so that was good. Right, okay, so you're you're the governor, okay, of um, storage migration services. Sorry, uh, it, you own it. 
I would say I'm very being very British there. You're the governor of um, uh, Storage Migration Service. What new options are there for people um, when they're trying to get stuff off of older computers like that? I mean, because this is something that people, everyone's going to want to try and do, right? Yeah, so we've had SMS came out in 2019 uh, server, and we haven't stopped. We kept iterating on it in 2019, and now with 22, we've uh, kept going there and have a, a number of new features. One is migration from NetApp. Uh, so from a NetApp array, uh, uh, a FAS with ONTAP 9 or later, uh, you can point your SMS towards a uh, NetApp, we will. We understand the NetApp configuration. We can actually talk to it in its own native way with their own PowerShell, and we can inventory the machine like you would with, uh, you know, a 2008 server you're trying to migrate. You can okay. do a transfer. You can do a cutover. You can take over the identities. The the NetApp SVMs, the uh, storage virtual machines, and SIFS instances will become Windows servers or Windows cluster instances, and the experience, the difference between that and migrating from say 2000 eight or 2012 or 2003 sources is you get an extra set of credentials to put in and a list of instances to choose from and the rest of the experience is identical that's one that's a really nice one um, the other big thing that we've done in the meantime is we added support for azure file sync so azure file sync is a is a, a rapidly growing in popularity a hybrid cloud service from the azure files team of which I'm like a dotted line PM. I'm sort of like a consultant PM over there. And uh, it, as you know, syncs data up to Azure from a file server on your own network, sort of the internal edge. So the user just sees Windows file server, share, it's all normal. And then the data is actually being synced up. And they have a, a cool feature called cloud tiering, which says, you know, uh, cold data, or you know, if you want all your data, but especially cold data syncs and hot data stays locally. And then you can have much less storage on-prem because you're not really using most of it all the time uh, because it's all up in the cloud. Well, to do that, you have to understand Azure File Sync's way of, of working. And if you just were to go to explore and copy a terabyte of data onto a one gigabyte drive, it will say, hey, I'm out of space because it's still syncing data. Like it's operating, it, it really is full at that point. But cloud tiering has the ability to tell a copy engine, I'm not out of space. I'm just, I'm replicating, I'm syncing, yeah. I'm dehydrating. So just hold your horses and let me catch up. And we plumbed a storage migration service, both in the UI and in the service itself to understand that. So uh, you can point to an Azure File Sync server and say, I'm using AFS. And when we start transferring data, we can transfer data way faster inside the, you know, the network, even for some old 2003 garbage server onto your new 22 server, then Azure File Sync can probably go over the internet, which is itself, you know, garbage. Yeah. So um, Azure File Sync is going as fast as it can. We're going as fast as we can. But as soon as Azure File Sync says, hey, I'm, I'm running out of space, just hold on a second. We'll pause our transfer and just wait. And we even change the UI around and stuff to say like, yeah, the transfer is not broken. Just hold on. Azure File Sync's got to catch up because uh, okay. this customer has the worst internet in the world. So it's, it's kind of almost like, I suppose, intelligent buffering is how I want to call That's it. That's a great way of explaining it. That's an absolutely perfect analogy. Cool. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like the, the more I talk to clever people like you, I feel like the cleverer I'm getting, which is- Well, I might, I might actually steal that one. Hopefully it's not copyrighted. No, 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 no. Well, <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't charge you. So that's <laughs> good. Um, <laughs> no, definitely. Well, um, I think, you know, we've talked about a few cool things today. And, um, you know, I think it's been great to get you first time on the show. And um, we definitely would love to have you again when, when, when you've got more time, which I appreciate you're busy. Um, you're PM on like a million things and you're, you know, doing a lot of other stuff and you've still got to write your blog. So, um, yeah, we probably won't get you anytime soon. But again, we'll hopefully have you again in the future. Um, no, before we go, we always try and do a, a fun, uh, fun bit of the show. Um, um, obviously, we've talked about SMB and we've talked about uh, SMS, all good. But now we're going to talk about memes. And um, this is, yeah, it's a little bit silly. Uh, but what we do is we show we show a couple of memes and then we kind of get the reaction. And obviously, me being basically a sales guy um, and then you being a technical guy, you will, and I, although Oren complained, he said, these are like dad jokes, Tom. Uh, and I was like, 
Oh, thanks. Okay, great. Um, I love that joke, so that's great. <laughs> well, it's sort of the point, really. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to share my screen, <coughs> and we'll try and get this. Uh, we'll try and get this to work. Da, 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 da. This is the problem when you have three screens. Make sure you pick the right screen. So the right. first meme is here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me know when you can see. Can you see? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, we, from what I can tell, we've got a snake in and around some networking. Guys, I need a network specialist with some Python experience. It's urgent. <laughs> no, I like I know Python is a coding language, right? So I'm not completely inept. But that that that's that's kind of like that that's kind of that's the joke, right? I mean that's uh, that's got to have been speaking of Orin, that's gotta be Australia. Yeah. What other places is gonna have Python showing up inside your data center? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's it's pretty scary down there. <laughs> anyway, that's quite funny so right so that's the first meme second meme um and by the way ned if you've got any memes and you think oh that's quite funny i'll send that to tom um just send it on over right so uh second meme is oh you're the right network admin so you're the right new network admin. let me make it bigger i'm making it bigger uh, oh you're the new network admin uh we have a small project in our server room for you that I mean, <laughs> I have been like not in that room, but I've been in that room. I have when I was in the in the late 90s and early 2000s, one of my jobs was to unscramble those things. So that's actually kind of traumatic to see that. Meme. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that there are there are actually and there are still server rooms where there are servers like with a kettle on top um, like that. Yeah, that like probably they, most. It's yeah. probably the majority. Yeah. I mean, well, as long as you get a good, and this is how British are, as long as you get a good cup of tea, uh, then it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Uh, look, Ned, it's been wonderful talking to you today, and thank you for making the time. Um, if, I, if I just summarise quickly, or, or, or certainly I'll, I'll do my summary, but we'll get the proper Ned summary. Um, SMB over quick is the best of compression, compatibility, and speed together built into... Uh, the new OSs. Uh, that's kind of kind of what I've understood from our, our chat today. And then the other one is SMS means you can stop using Robocopy and all that other stuff. And you can actually just do a proper good copy within the software that's provided by Microsoft. You don't have to mess around anymore using other other third party stuff. That's right. kind of what I learned today. I think is there is there a better Ned way of saying those things or no, you've nailed it. That's uh, that's precisely what I would say myself if I only had one sentence to give. <laughs> Intelligent buffering. Uh, you can have that for free, Ned. No problem at all. Right, that's um, down. Um, so, <laughs> um, look, it's been a pleasure talking to Ned. Um, if you guys have got um, anything you want to know about, if there's a subject matter that you're desperate to find out about and you want to talk to somebody who makes the stuff like Ned, we will go out there, we will find people and we will annoy people until they come on this show and we will ask them the questions that you want asked so like thank you very much for joining us on the rock to the show uh, rock to the rock to the cloud even i've got the name of my show um and i'm tom and uh, this has been tom hall and we've also had ned so thanks ned bye ned bye, -bye.